Welcome to another live stream. Uh, I'm playing with my settings this time. Uh, over the last week, uh, actually the last two weeks, I've gotten to do a whole lot of playing with live streams at work, and I've learned a lot about the software, and I'm also learning the areas that I want to invest in some technology so that you get a better, get a better, get a better live stream from yours truly. What has two thumbs and wants a better live stream? This guy, Clay Carlino. So I've actually got a two camera setup going. Yeah, yeah, okay. Aaron, Nathan, you said that you wanted a two camera live stream. Well, here we go. We've got the webcam built into the laptop, which is actually not that good. It's got this haze because um, there's there's light hitting my, my white t-shirt and it seems to be glowing. Or maybe I'm just angelic. Should I do duck face? There you go, duck face. It's not the internet unless somebody's done duck face. So uh, yeah, that's, that's the first webcam. And we also have a second webcam right here. Look at that. Yeah, that is Combiner Wars Superion who is an awesome toy. He is made up of the aerial bots for those people who are unfamiliar with the Transformers universe. And uh, that should give you some indication if you didn't read the title already. I'm kit bashing. Kit bashing is the term for when you take perfectly good toys and fix them. And uh, so, uh, speaking of perfectly good toys, uh, this is combined, or this is Power of the Prime's Star Screen, and I'm gonna put him over here on the second camera. Move over, Superion. So we're going to switch cameras because the other camera is gonna be a lot nicer. There we go. So this is Power of the Prime's Star Screen. And uh, yeah, he's not a bad toy. He is a uh, hefty retool, I think, of Silverbolt, the central character of Superion over here. Uh, he is mostly a, a, a robot with, yeah, I'm having a hard time remembering which way to put him so that he's showing in the camera. Uh, he is mostly a robot with a jet on his back, as you can see. There's a folded up robot. It's, he's not even folded up very much. I mean, you know, there's, a, there's the head and then the arms are not hidden at all and then very obvious legs down here. But, uh, but he's still got a r nice robot mode, which I will show you. Okay, so let's uh, do what we're supposed to do here and go Power of the Prime Star Scream. We'll switch camera angles once again. There we go. So this is Power of the Prime's Star Scream, and uh, I wonder if I can put this down here. I think that I can actually put the the back down so that he's not quite. So he doesn't have a nose cone sticking up above his head. Which, if you're an aerial bot then it's not such a bad thing to have an, a nose cone sticking up above your head, but for a Decepticon Seeker, that's a big no-no. So, uh, yeah, this is him, and, you know, uh, obviously it's not as challenging to come up with a good robot mode when you've got the entire robot mode folded up on the bottom of the jet, but it's still nice. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the what 1986 animated movie 
where uh, after Starscream had taken over the Decepticons, he had the very large chest and and the big fat arms. You know, he had obviously kind of done some had some work done and then he was wearing a cape and a crown which was just ridiculous but kind of awesome at the same time so uh let me show you what else is cool about this toy uh i'm gonna switch back here uh see, see this is where i kind of wish that i had an operator. I, I, I need a second person running the computer so that they can just switch and it can be seamless. But um, right now I'm kind of doing this stuff on my own. So uh, so you're just going to have to deal with the fact that I'm going to say things like, let me switch back to the other camera. And then you see me fiddle on one side and a moment later the screen changes. So uh, being a Power of the Primes uh, figure, uh, this is based heavily off of the tooling from the Combiner Wars line that was two years earlier. And Combiner Wars, of course, everything combined. And it, that was a good line. I, I really like that line. Uh, they, uh, we got really decent, you know, for the first time in, in like 30 years, we got really, really good good versions of the combiners that they created when uh, when we were kids and uh, and and many many more you know they they took the stunicons and they repainted all of them many many times to make lots of different autobots you know gen 1 autobot characters that had never been combiner wars or had had never been combiner figures before, but of course they gave us an Optimus Prime version of Motormaster, so he became a body, and then you had all of these Autobots that com could combine with him. But for whatever reason, they did not give the Decepticons the same treatment. And um, I, I, I don't understand why. I mean, why would you not repaint the aerial bots as Decepticon Seekers. You, you don't even have to do any heavy retooling. You know, just give them a different face and and the the right the right colors and uh, you know suckers like me will buy the same mold over and over again. Uh, that's it's I'm not saying that I'm smart but I would have done it. They did a uh, repaint and slight retool of uh, Silverbolt. Silverbolt got used a lot. Where, uh, where he was Cyclonus, and he looks great as Cyclonus. That, uh, that mold really lended itself well to Cyclonus, and it's really hard to transform this with gloves on. Got the gloves on because I'm going to be working with some chemicals and dye and stuff like that. But I'm going to take them off right now. So they had done this, this really nice repaint of uh, Silverbolt as Cyclonus. And then they never gave us any sweeps. How, I mean, this stuff writes itself. You know, even do a, uh, a, a really uninspired repaint of one of the aerial bots as, in sweet colors. Call him Scourge. I'll probably buy him four times because in the cartoon there were a bunch of sweeps that I, I don't know if they were all supposed to be named Scourge or if only the main one was named Scourge and then the others just didn't have a name. Um, but for whatever reason, they, you know, they were even a step simpler than the original Decepticon Seekers that were all the same toy, just in different colors. The sweeps were all the same color. I mean, doesn't that make it even easier? Uh, so yeah, wh 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 why did they not do this? And then of course, in Power of the Primes, we get Starscream that I'm having a devil of a time getting the, uh, the combiner head to, to come out. I'm trying to get the chest to open. And, uh, and I, I, I chewed off my fingernails because, you know, I, I have nervous issues. Uh, don't judge me. So I'm trying to get 
the ah, there we go there we go so we got the chest to open and then we pull out the head and then at the same time we turn the head around here and just push it right down in does it push down in it's supposed to push down in come on star screen push down in there we go so the head pushes down in like that and then this head goes here, the legs go together just like that. And there's a little notch here that they lock together, which, uh, which works really well. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised at how well that works. And then these panels swing up and catch on some little notches that are on the wingtips here. And then the, that clicks in there, and you pivot that around. And there we've got King Star Scream. And uh, let me switch cameras yet again. So there we have him. And, uh, and that looks awesome. I mean, that's a nice combiner body. I guess we need to flip the feet down because that's where the shoulders would attach. So, you know, he's got the crown. Obviously, a lot of inspiration from the animated movie. Uh, it's the same crown. You know, he's got the, uh, you know, he's still got the, the Starscream cockpit on the chest. I've seen this body style compared a lot to the... Uh, the first Bayformers movie, uh, the, the body in that. And I can sort of see the comparison, except that everything in that movie was shit. So, uh, so I'm going to ignore it. Uh, <laughs> you know, that this is just kind of cool in its own right. And if there's any similarity to the Bayformers travesty, then I've decided that that's completely coincidental. So, uh, so we get this. And it's like, oh, are they finally going to repaint the aerial pots as Decepticon Seekers or maybe even do some new molds? Uh, the, the answer to that is no. No, they... No, we, we got nothing. They gave us Darkwing and Dreadwind, which were the Decepticon Power Masters, and they were able to combine into uh, Dreadwing, which was their, uh, I want to call them Darkwing Duck, <laughs> but no, uh, Dreadwing, which was their combined spaceship mode. And you can still do that with the toys. It, it doesn't work as well as the original version. Uh, I, I did a little bit of kit bashing on that to make that better too, which at some point I'll probably show in a, uh, in a video or a live stream. But uh, the, the, the problem there, and, and of course those did combine, you know, those were limbs. So we had Starscream as uh, as a body and then we got two limbs but the question is um why would they combine with starscream in the entire history of the transformers franchise whether it's the animated movie or the uh, gen 1 tv show or even uh, any of the subsequent TV shows, which there have been a lot, some of which weren't very good, but uh, nonetheless, uh, they were there. Uh, comic books, tons of comic books. And to my knowledge, I don't think that Star any of the incarnations of Starscream have ever actually had any interaction with Darkwing and Dreadwind. Uh, and, and this is a good opportunity for you, Internet, to correct me. Uh, yeah, I do have the comments on, so I should probably open that window so that if somebody decides to comment on this, win on this video that I can see what they have to say. So I'm doing a little bit of computer stuff right here. There. Now, uh, notice that I have... Uh, I think I've given up on having my chat window show up in, you know... Uh, on screen.
because uh, I even figured out how to see it on my phone. Uh, it's not quite as obvious, but you know, if people want to see the chat window, um, they they it, it's there, so it doesn't really have to be on screen. I kind of liked it in some ways when it was on screen because then when when things would pop up then then I could respond to it and it was obvious rather than me saying things about what was going on in the chat that wasn't immediately obvious to the viewer you know I'm trying to to get in the mind of the viewer so anyway um yes if you out there on the internet are a Transformers geek like me and you know of an occasion in any of the official uh, fiction where Starscream had some interaction with Darkwing and Dreadwind or even one of them comment uh, you know even after this is posted feel free to leave a comment and and show me how wrong I am Come on, Internet. You love to show people online how wrong they are. You know you do. So this is your opportunity. So, um, yeah. Uh, and, and still, that's, that's only two appendages. So we could have a, 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 a one-armed, one-legged King Starscream or maybe a two-legged Starscream with no arms. You know, he could, like, do the... Uh, yeah, I'll kick you. Uh, I, and your arms, uh, your arms not there. And I'm sorry, I shouldn't be doing that. But nonetheless, we all know Monty Python, and we all love them. So, um, yeah, or maybe, maybe he could just like walk around on his little, on on his hands here, uh, you know, little stubs, and then have some big hulking arms. But still, that's not a full combiner. Hasbro, wh why, why? Can somebody from Hasbro please explain to me why, why? Just put different colored plastic into the freaking machine and sell it to me. I, I, I'll buy it. I'm a sucker. So anyway, that's, that's my rant. Um, so the the obvious solution is to take Superion and get the aerial bots and make them into Seekers. Now, of course, I'm not going to sacrifice my actual aerial bots here because they're aerial bots and they look great. But what I can do is I can go to... Uh, to AliExpress and I can get these. Let's change our view yet again. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do some some great camera work here. So these are knockoff aerial bots from AliExpress. And they were probably about seven or eight dollars a piece and took what about a month to get here but nonetheless uh, the quality is actually very very nice these uh, you know they they look identical to the originals and they're exactly the same size and uh, and, and they tr the transforms are great so yeah um, I, I, I bought these I bought two air raids uh, and I bought two of oh gosh um, I, I, I don't remember this guy uh, I think this was this wasn't slingshot that uh, skydive I believe this was skydive so um, and as you can see, I've been doing some uh, some kit bashing on these guys as well. They they don't, uh, you know, this this uh, after I change his colors is going to be thrust. And so I created these uh, these out of some of the the extra 
weapons that I got with these guys and I put in these these uh, fans which are made from translucent uh, matchbox wheels and uh, th those just plug into the wings I drilled some holes in so that they would plug into the wings and it and it's certainly not a perfect analog for the uh, vertical takeoff attachments that are on Gen 1 thrusts wings. Uh, none of these are intended to to look like the Gen 1 versions. Uh, ki they're kind of more of a reimagining of those characters. Uh, you know, capture the likeness enough that uh, that you get the point, but not a straight up uh, redo. Um, I, I would have to do a lot more work to make these things really look like the Gen 1 counterparts. And I think if that was my goal, I would be dissatisfied. So uh, I've also taken a lot of the pieces out of some of these guys uh, so, so that I would be able to, uh, to paint them and dye them and stuff like that. Uh, this one, my intention with him is for this to be Thundercracker, and you can see that I've actually changed the transform a little. I've got the arms on top going over the wings, and then I've got some, uh, some Gen 1 guns that, uh, that you know, I, I've got a bin of extra pieces to broken toys. Uh, these are the rocket launchers from Swoop. And then I don't know whose missiles these are. Um, I'm not. I'm not destroying any any good toys. These are like the 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 knockoffs and the broken versions that I have a whole bin of. But let me transform this so that you can sort of see see what the the goal is. In fact, actually, I don't even have to take the guns off in order to transform him. So let's. Well, and as you can see, I've taken out the pins, so we're just going to have to do some very careful transforming so that he doesn't just fall to pieces. But sort of in the way that Dreamwave, or not Dreamwave, IDW has, uh, yeah, that's a bad, uh, a bad mistake. Uh, IDW is no Dreamwave because IDW actually knows how to create a transformer series and finish it <laughs> so very carefully doing some transforming here it's important to do the noise you know that that's there's no reason that just because I'm an old fart now that I can't do the noise. And then that shoulder goes down like that. And you can see that I already remolded uh, a, a Thundercracker head. Here, let me move it back. I don't think the camera likes being, likes it being that that close but so this is going to be thundercracker and uh and, I, and i'm i actually i'm kind of digging this uh I, I realize that i don't have the little boxes here um i didn't feel like that was completely necessary for him to still convey his thundercrackerness uh but i do have the upturned wings which is nice and I've got the arm cannons which uh, which look good in that position and, uh, and and the joints on these these Chinese versions are, are very tight so you know this this is a nice toy uh, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna be very happy to uh, to see him as Thundercracker you can see I also uh, attached some uh, some shoulder vents you know and Sure, they they really don't turn into anything in the robot mode or in the uh, in the jet mode. They're they're just sort of there. 
but they also don't they're not terribly noticeable and they don't really detract so uh, so, so I'm okay with that so that, that's that's gonna be Thundercracker and you can see uh, I believe that the intention with this one is to make ramjet uh, might maybe not ramjet um, maybe dirge I think that this might end up being dirge and you can see that I have given him a uh, an extra cockpit here and this one in order to get it out of the way for the combined form I've got it uh, I've got it screwed in with a little slot and so this will be able to pivot up and out of the way when he is in his combined form but uh, and here you can see the extra shoulder pieces that I've added in which are actually cut out of uh, Creo blocks not Lego because Creo you know these are actually Transformers Creos so technically these are like a Transformers part sort of so we that's that's going to be ramjet and then uh, then of course you know we've seen thrust here uh, he's another one where I've done a, a little bit of of uh, changing to his transform first of all you take off this this little thing which doesn't have to be there in the vehicle mode but it's uh, it's a nice place for it I guess it could be considered like a secondary cockpit which of course wouldn't exist in any realistic aircraft but these are robots that turn into vehicles so they can they can do whatever they want you know where does an 800 pound gorilla sleep anywhere he wants where does a giant Decepticon jet sleep anywhere he wants they don't sleep they recharge this is like the geekiest live stream that I've ever done and possibly you've ever seen. No, it's not the, the geekiest live stream you've ever seen. <laughs> Let's just be honest. There are far geekier live streams than this. So this is where I've kind of changed things up. I really liked the thrust that they did uh, during the, uh, I, I think it was the Revenge of the Fallen movie line. And there were actually some decent toys that were of characters that never appeared in the movie. But they had some, some pretty cool transforms that were sort of a hybrid of the uh, hideous Michael Bay movie style. And and the and an actual like toy that you'd want to own kind of style so I believe that my intention was for these to go down here now you could leave them up there if you wanted it's not bad for a guy to have shoulder cannons but um, so on this one I thought it would be interesting to have the wings up on the shoulders because I kinda like that dynamic look and uh, and it makes him look a little bit more like a Decepticon. And then this piece that I took off of the back just plugs right into the slot right here. And then it falls through the hole in the table. And I have to find it. Uh, here it is, here it is. There we go. So uh, yeah, this just plugs in right there. Now, now that it now that it's in there, it's actually pretty secure, and see, you know, that's uh, that would be thrust. And notice that I kept the same head because he's already got kind of a cone head thing going on. So, uh, so that you know, I feel like with just some repainting of the face, I can make him look more like fr thrust. And I just pulled that off. I might have to do a little bit more work on that. Here, wait. What I need to do is just do this. There. We'll pull it out and actually squeeze it on there. Now, now it'll stay. 
So yeah, uh, that's going to be thrust, and uh, I, 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 I'm I'm digging that. And you know, the these things even are reminiscent of the uh, box boobs that Decepticons tend to have. Yeah, you know, the Decepticon seekers. So uh, I I like that, and then. Uh, this is going to be Skywarp, and you know Skywarp, you know I mean this, this kind of already screams Skywarp. Sure, he's more, uh, his his vehicle design is more reminiscent of Jetfire, but uh, but you know the color and uh, and just sort of the the lines on him. He, he, he really screams Skywarp to me. So, um, and this is another one that I've taken the pins out. See? So, I'll show you the transform and try not to have them fall apart in my hands. Of course, the, the worst thing about the Combiner Wars aerial bots was that they all, their vehicle modes were pretty much just airplanes on their backs and and a slightly, you know, really just a robot body with the legs folded up underneath. And uh, and that's, uh, that's a conceit that I'm willing to make. I really wish that they had done more to hide the, uh, the, the arms. Uh, I, I think that if they had just done a little bit more to keep the arms from, from sticking out so obviously, then, then it would have helped. But, um, but you know, they gave us really good combined forms and uh, and acceptable vehicle forms and pretty decent robot modes. So you know that that's a lot to pull off from an engineering standpoint. Now you can see very obviously that these are uh, are. Creo pieces. I wanted to call them Legos, but these are Creo pieces. These ones I have screwed in, and so I just give them a twist, and that's now part of the transform, and then now I'm able to move the head. And I also have this cockpit, which this is another thing that I actually got off of a matchbox car. And I've, you know, I did a little bit of heat forming. You know, I went into it with, uh, with a little torch and bent the tabs over so that it would snap in around the grooves that are already in this piece. And that allows it to move out of the way for the combined form, but also gives him a cockpit in the chest, which for a Decepticon Seeker, uh, that's you know that, that's sort of their their shtick. His whole body is trying to come apart as I mess with him because he's got no pins holding him together. So, uh, but but you can see this is another one where I molded a new head. I'm trying to get that in focus, but you know it's just really hard. The camera doesn't want to go that close, and then once I move it away far enough that it is in focus, it's very tiny. But yeah, I, I molded a new head. These heads are uh, copies of the heads from uh, Fall of Cybertron, Starscream, and Thundercracker, and Skywarp. I, I forget which one that I copied, but they're, they're all just straight up repaints of each other, so it's the same head. And, but they, uh, it's not a bad seeker head design, and it was about the right size, so that was... Uh, and it seemed like a no-brainer to just make a mold of that and then make a couple heads. My, my nose coat and steep keeps coming off. But see, now that, you know, imagine that in the right colors, and that's going to be Skywarp. He's going to look great. So, oh, and I have a couple, you know, I have the, the guns which can plug into the arms. I, uh, it didn't take a lot to drill into the undersides of these just a little bit with a five millimeter bit and uh, create a hole that I can plug a 
a standard set of Transformers weapons. And I don't even remember what guy these are from. Again, this is my big bin of parts where I have extra pieces from from long lost guys. But so yeah, uh, yeah, he has his arm cannons, which you can see right there. And sure, they're not on the outsides of the arms. I thought about doing that, but uh, but you know, I'm I'm okay with this. Uh, again, these aren't intended to be a straight up copy of the Gen One versions. They're sort of a reimagining of their Gen One likenesses. So so that's going to be. Sky warp. So, uh, so that brings us to where we are right now, and, and it's taken me ha about half an hour just to to catch you up on what the plan is. But I have to make these different colors, and uh, I'm some of it's going to just require straight up painting. I. You know, I, I don't I don't like repainting if I don't have to, just because especially on Transformers toys where they're you know, you're you're playing with them, you're changing them around, you're moving them and parts are scraping against each other and stuff like that. Paint chips and uh, and then it looks bad or it gets fingerprints and uh, so I'm gonna try something a little bit different and uh, and it's experimental, and if it doesn't work, then uh, I've uh, I'll have blown eight bucks or more on some Chinese knockoffs of Transformers. And this is a lesson to you at Hasbro. I spent I bought the Chinese knockoffs because you wouldn't provide me with official repaints if you just made the repaints i would have paid your 20 dollar ridiculous price point for these okay i mean that's that that is my commitment i would have paid 20 dollars a piece for these because that's what you charge instead of paying eight to get the real ones but you wouldn't do it you wouldn't just mold these in some different colors. I, I, I would love, I would love to know the thought process. Maybe they thought that since they had given us the giant Devastator, they wanted to offset it with a whole bunch of Autobot combiners since we got like twice as many Autobot combining teams than Decepticons in that line and then they did the same thing with Power of the Primes because you got you know we had gotten uh, Trypticon the line before which that was uh, that was the Headmaster one Titan Masters uh, and then in Power of the Primes what, what do we get Power of the Primes for the giant what was the Oh, Predaking! Predaking, yeah. So, you know, and again, we got Predaking as a very, very large scale combiner. And maybe the thought was, okay, we give Decepticons a really big guy and then make a lot of, a lot more smaller Autobot guys. Um, dudes, dudes, just make me some Decepticon Seekers. And at some point, we're going to have to talk about the Alita One combiner body that you created too. That's coming, so if you're from Hasbro, watch out. That's coming when you least expect it. So, I've gotta repaint these, or I've gotta recolor them, and I'm gonna try something a little bit different than what I've done before, and I've seen things online talking about this, so I'm out here in a sacrificial shirt because I don't want to get ink and, and die. But yeah, the thought is to uh, use dye and try and actually tint my parts. That's, I don't, I don't know. Um, 
And what makes it worse is that I know that uh, a lot of people are using a solution of acetone. And I went down in my basement to get my can of acetone, and it is empty. I do not have acetone. So, live stream's over. We're not getting anything done tonight. <laughs> no, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an experiment here. Uh, I have lacquer thinner. I know that uh, when I've used lacquer paint on transformers, it breaks down the plastic. And yeah, you know, I've uh, yeah I've done some repainting where, and I used lacquer thinner to remove the paint, and uh, and then the next morning I notice cracks in in the plastic. So. I know that this will react with the plastic, assuming that these Chinese knockoffs are made out of the same plastic. I'm not sure, but uh, but it's eight dollars, and the whole purpose of these is to screw them up. It would be nice if I screw them up in a way that I like better when it's done than it started. But if I screw it up, I'll spend another eight bucks. <laughs> That's just what's going to happen. So I'm thinking of mild, a mild solution. Uh, I know with the acetone, a lot of people have been talking about going 45%. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do 45%. So, uh, the first thing that I need to do is I need a victim, and that's going to be Skywarp here. And uh, I'm going to take this apart. Let's switch camera views once again. So, we've got Skywarp, and let's just go ahead and move the camera. There we go. Okay, so. We've got Skywarp. Hello, Skywarp. He's not quite Skywarp yet, but he's he's on his way to being Skywarp. So, as I mentioned, I actually took the pins out of him. There's a hinge pin that goes through his back here that kind of holds the entire body together. Now, this doesn't need to be painted. And... The uh, the thighs don't need to be painted, but you know what? The crotch, actually the crotch, if I remember correctly, the crotch is silver. So that's going to need a little bit of tinting because I don't want it to be white. I would like the base to be gray. So let's go ahead and snap these out of here. And uh, there's that one. And... There's that one. And then there's the legs, which if I remember on Skywarp, um, would you pull up a picture of Gen 1 Skywarp for me? Just, just confirm that the legs are black. Got my lovely assistant, Monica, here, who doesn't want to be on camera. Is that correct? Yes, yes, she does not want to be on camera. But nonetheless, she is here and she is helping me. Uh, I, I need to see if the legs need to be black or if they're silver. I think they're black with like a purple detail on the front. So we've got that. Uh, shoulders are definitely going to be black. So let's take the arms off. Oh yeah, his his legs are black. His uh, in that version, the shoulders are purple, but but I know that that on the original Gen One toy they were black. So I think that that's you know you can get away with either one, and uh, and then the crotch is silver, the chest is silver. Uh, these little areas around the midsection are going to be black, but that can be done with paint. So. 
let's uh, let's take the arms out here. Uh, I don't want to break them, but but I have to kind of bend the joint against itself in order to pop that out. And you know, I can also be careful when you're taking these apart because the Combiner Wars ratcheting mechanism is spring-loaded and it just wants to fly to pieces. So, you know, uh, just be aware that that will happen when you try to work with these. And then I'm going to try and pop this. There we go. Pop that apart. And pop that apart. And that can go like that. And that can go like that. And then I probably need to take these off at some point here. But the base color of this is going to be silver. Uh, and unfortunately, it really looks, let me, let me just do a little test here. Oh wait, yeah, you can, okay, you can see that the base color of this is actually white. And here, I'm gonna do a little bit of scraping on the inside where you can see that. So this has been painted. And ideally, I need to get that paint off, which is unfortunate, because that means using some kind of thinner. And I really don't want to stress out the plastic by using something that's going to dissolve the uh, you know break down the integrity of the plastic so I'm gonna take out my little shoulder vents just like that and And then uh, I'm not going to do any tinting on the lower arms here. Uh, I may paint the lower arm purple, but I think that that is probably just going to be done with paint rather than trying to do any kind of repainting. I did break this joint when I was doing the, uh, the, the work on you know, modifying him, and you can see that like this is an air raid sh shoulder. This is a, did we decide the other guy was skydive? Um, this is skydive's arm. And if I'm getting the name of skydive wrong, uh, you know, feel free to correct me, that's okay. So what I did was I put a screw in here so that this would just slide in. And, and that, that actually worked. You know, it's, it's, a little, it's a little scary and heartbreaking when, when you actually break a joint but it's not necessarily the end of the world. I mean, it's never the end of the world, but it's not necessarily the end of the toy. You know, there, there's oftentimes ways to fix these if you're just a little bit creative. And I'm gonna to attempt to get this apart without breaking that joint because I really don't wanna to have to fix another one. Boy, that's really in there. That's tight. It is. Ah, there we go. Okay, so there's that guy. I think that the problem was that this little T shape here was wider on Skydive than it was on Air Raid. And when I tried to put the Air Raid or the Skydive arm onto the Air Raid shoulder, it broke it off because I can see where I've trimmed this down just a little bit with an exacto blade so that I could fit that on there after finding out that when I tried to do it on this one it broke so you know lessons learned so we've got some uh, some pieces here that that are white that need to be tinted black or at least uh, at least gray and so we're gonna put those in this little container here. And there we go. 
and then uh, this also. Now let me just, I just want to check something. I want to make sure that this is actually uh, tinted, or this is actually gray plastic and not just uh, painted and it's got some kind of, and it's actually a different color underneath. No, no, okay, so that's gray all the way through. So we want to make that black as well. And gosh, you know, I, I, I hate taking out these pins. I, I really hate taking out these pins. I'm, I'm wondering if maybe I'll half tempted to just paint that rather than taking out those pins. Or I could just try tinting, you know, putting the whole part in, but if I'm using solvents and things and it reacts with either the pins and causes corrosion or it does break down plastic, yeah, you know, let's, let's not, not mess with those. Um, so we have this to deal with and we have these parts. That's actually not a lot. Uh, let's look to see if there's any other guys that are gonna need you know, we've got Thundercracker here, and he is going to need to be blue. Uh, he, you know, that's that's why I gave him the white appendages because they should be pretty easy to tint blue. But that's going to be a separate process because we're doing the black right now. So um, here's what I'm going to do. I've got I've got a bucket of hot water here. Now this is the pack of Rit dye. And I probably should have looked for the stuff that's made for synthetic pa syn synthetic fabrics because that would have been better for plastic, but this is just the normal cheap black. And I've got my bucket. Now you, you use one pack to a cup of water. So I'm going to use about half of that. I think that my, my cup is cracked. Is my cup cracked? My cup is cracked. Okay, so. Okay, so that's about a cup of water. And this is where I need my gloves back. So let's put on, put on gloves. I'm going to move the camera a little bit more. Try and get a better view of what's going on here. Yeah, there we go. All right, so. See, we've got we've got this much powder. And I'm using half as much water as it calls for, so I'm going to use half as much powder. Which means I'm going to fold this in half and then just tear that on this end. go. Now, now I still have some for uh, for any other stuff that I need to be tinted black. Okay, so we have this in here now, and I'm pretty sure that just having these parts in in black dye is not going to do anything to them. Because now maybe I'm wrong. Um, yeah, maybe this plastic is uh, you know being probably cheaper than the stuff that Hasbro uses. 
is uh, is going to be a little bit more willing to to take tint, but uh, but that's you know it certainly doesn't doesn't look like it's actually taking any color. It's just sort of got stuff on it. So what I'm going to do is I've got my my lacquer thinner here and I'm going to put in some, some measured amounts well not that measured because I, mean, I guess I could actually use uh, use like measuring spoons let me go get a measuring spoon let's do this all scientific like we'll be right back after this word, except there won't be any words because I'm going away. Just a minute. So uh, let's take let's take a uh, tablespoon of lacquer thinner. You know, I'm going to do a half tablespoon just to be on the safe side. And let's see if that has any effect. I'm out on my back patio right now. And uh, it's actually a, a reasonably nice night. It, it was raining for a while, which was really annoying because I had set out cardboard for painting if I needed to paint. So we have these things in here. We have just a little bit of lacquer thinner and, uh, and a cheap spoon from the uh, <laughs> it's it's actually soft, so that that that's interesting. Now the question is: Is that going to eat my parts and make them all gooey? I hope not. So we got these. Well, seeing as how now this spoon is probably made of styrene. Uh, styrene is very cheap plastic, and it's not. It's not super strong, but uh, but it uh, it's useful. Uh, it's just kind of a cheap plastic. These are most likely high density polyethylene, and polyethylene is chemically resistant to a lot of glues and adhesives, and and other things. So uh, and that's what one of the things that makes it so hard to paint. Uh, styrene is not chemically resistant at all. Uh, it, it, will, it will react to most solvents. So, uh, so, you know, I guess I shouldn't be too, too worried about the fact that this is breaking down. But, uh, but you know, uh, it, it, it was absolutely possible that this could have been made of styrene too, but considering how much abuse I've already put these pieces through and they didn't break, my guess is that they are high density polyethylene and not styrene. At least that's my guess. And they're certainly not getting gummy, which does 
does support the not styrene hypothesis. Those are starting to, well, you, you can see that the edges here, the edges are still very, very white. And if I were to, yeah, when I wipe it off, there's no, there, there's no, there's no tint there. It's just not taken any, any dye yet. So. Let's go ahead and do another half tablespoon. sit a little bit, tip it up, that way all the parts can just kind of be covered. There we go, set those over there. And while, uh, while we're waiting, I need to address this. Uh, this is a problem. Fortunately, I have another container. I'm pretty confident that if I just poured lacquer thinner in here and put this in, it would remove the paint. But I think it would also break down the plastic. So I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm going to try putting some water in here. And then making another solution with lacquer thinner. So that, uh, so that it's just strong enough to remove the paint, but not necessarily eat all of my, uh, all of my parts. Eating the Transformers parts is bad. Keeping the Transformers parts not eaten is good. I do science good. I... I speak good. I say good words. I, I, I use the best words. <laughs> so uh, with this one, I've got less water and uh, I'm gonna put in a full, there we go. You know, let's, let's even go a couple. We are actually trying to remove the paint, not just annoy the paint. And what I really need is an old toothbrush. That, that, that would be nice. I, I should get myself an old toothbrush. But I don't wanna I don't wanna poke it with this with this pokey thing. So I can I can feel it getting uh, getting a little bit slippery there, so that that's a plus. It's, I'm trying to kind of pick it up with the thing. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely slippy. All right, uh, I'm not gonna let it just. Oh, there we go. So we're already seeing some of the uh, some of the paint start to start to soften. That's good. And let's put that back in there. I would really 
probably prefer not to not to destroy these things. That that would be nice. Kind of surprised that this is a white piece that's just entirely painted with red. Um, you know, that, it seems like. I guess if they didn't have, uh, if they didn't really have a, a, a lot of uh, other red parts to, to mold, it does make sense. Boy, that's that that paint is persistent. Ah. Here. That's that's starting to starting to come off, but you know I'm also lightly scraping it with an exacto blade. So okay, we'll let that soak a little bit longer, or a lot longer. Set that aside. Let's uh, let's check our pieces here are they taking any taking any tint there we go so all right Well, now it looks dirty white rather than just white. You can see the little not not an Autobot sign that's on it. Yeah, that, that is a that is a Chinese absolutely not an Autobot sign. But it's red and it's you know sort of badge shaped, but it definitely doesn't look like a face. The Autobot sign looks like a face, so uh, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna up the solution just a little bit. Let's go with another half of a tablespoon. There we go. So now I'm just sort of waiting, waiting for parts to do stuff. That's not really any fun to watch. So I'm kind of thinking of wrapping up this live stream. But I will give updates on this project because, um, because I think it's kind of a cool project. And I will definitely show how things came out. And if stuff didn't work, I will tell you about it. And then I'll also tell you what did work. And who knows, maybe I'll do another live stream where I show other processes. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I think that that's enough for tonight. Uh, at least enough for you to watch because, I mean, do you really want to watch parts just sitting in fluid hoping that they change color? That doesn't sound like fun. And so, yeah, that's it. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you everybody who logged in and, and watched this thing. Thank you everybody who watches this after the fact. And um, please feel free to comment. I like comments. Comments are great. Uh, if there's stuff that you see that I got wrong, then I'm, I'm perfectly happy to be corrected and uh, you know because uh, I like having good information on my site and on my channel and I encourage people to read the comments and look for updates because when I do find out something that I've done wrong 
then I, I, I put it in the comments. When people correct me, I put it in the comments. And, uh, and also when people say nice stuff, I definitely leave that in the comments because it's really good for my ego. That, that's, I mean, isn't that really what, what's important to every YouTuber? That's right, I just referred to myself as a YouTuber. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how, how I feel about that. All right, everybody, have a wonderful night. And uh, this is Clay Carlino showing you that you do not have to be afraid to order some really awesome toys on AliExpress for a cheap price and then destroy them. They're not destroyed, but they are in pieces. This is Clay Carlino telling you to be brave. Yay! See, I still did the yay. Ha!